ask uh, Mr. Mushfikul uh, Fazal to to say a, a few words. Mr. Uh, Fazal is a UN correspondent uh, for Just News uh, in New York. Please, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you are going to uh, do a presentation. All right. So thank you very much for this wonderful seminar. And the title is Simplification of Targeting Media and Journalists on Human Rights and Democracy. And I would like to thank uh, uh, Bangladesh Progressive Alliance of North America and Harvard International Relations Council as we are facing very uh, critical time, as, uh, as we both are, I have to say, I to say. And I'll go for a, uh, though it's already covered by the Mr. Kanvi Nawaz, but I'll skip whatever he has covered. And the rest of the thing, I'm waiting for my slide. Um, my name is uh, Mushfikul Fazal. I'm waiting uh, for this, and I'm taking this time, and I'm working as uh, United Nations correspondent and partly White House correspondent for Just News Media. Yeah. And I also face uh, critical time from my uh, ruling authority. Uh, you know, the I'll go uh, into in Bangladesh, especially the very recent act, which is passed by the ruling government to control the media in Bangladesh. As I am from Bangladesh, and I will focus on that. And the, as I mentioned, this is a very uh, a horrific incident we have seen about Mr. Khashoggi. I'll, if technical difficulties are solved, I will try to uh, show his voice because I, I don't want to go in his detail. Already you got the picture about his career and who he is and what was his background. But he only one thing he said, I, want, I don't want to uh, change the government. I, want, I don't want to change the ruling authority. I'm not, I just want only one thing that I want to write and I want to say. Just simply one thing he wished to, it, 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 it was his wish that freely he can express his views, freely he can express what he believes. That is his only fault, and he got the uh, he, he is targeted by the the way you know this this incident. I did not find an example from the history. This a this a safe entity we know the sovereign entity, the country within the country we can say in the consulate, and he what the way he you know disappeared and they killed by the ruling authority. I cannot describe in the words what horrific it is. And the already he mentioned the book. Can I get my slide? Okay. Okay, go ahead and I'm trying to continue. And uh, you know the as mentioned that uh, the two fellow journalists are from the writers, those who are working in Myanmar. And they just simply, they are doing their job, the investigating reporting, you know. It's nothing is hidden, everything is visible. Everybody can, this is a global <coughs> village. If I want to hide something, it cannot be. It, is, it will be discovered one day. But that, just they report and they try to, especially the, 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 his in their investigating reporting was the tan, you know, the Rakhine, uh, Rakhine people that died, they killed by the uh, law enforcement agency and they, try to discover what happened and the, you know, the Rakhine state. And that's why the, the police invited them in a, in a lunch. And then they, after this lunch, they finished, they are going out and the law enforcement agency picked up and they got the 14 years, you know, uh, punishment from the early government. At least they disclose, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they, still they are not disappeared or they are not killed, at least they are alive. So even then, where we are talking right now in the United States of America, you know, I I have I got that opportunity to uh, to cover the uh, president, uh, even the outside, you know, the Berlin and the London. In London, when I cover, I I went to the White House press corps uh, to cover him, and because I had to focus on on to 
what's going on and how they receive a president like the United States of America. And you know the, the, the balloon and all these things what happened. And I reported accordingly, beside the uh, president's schedule, I report, you know, obviously the things is happening. And I should say, even that all these circumstances is happening, all these incidents is happening, and, I, and, I can, I, I, and as I can mention, uh, I can mention about the Jim Acosta, one of our fellow colleagues, what he, how he treated in the recent week in the pre president's press conference, you know. And, and this is not the, uh, this, this, uh, this is very uncomfortable, not for the American journalists, for the world as well, because as we know, America is a patron of the freedom of press, role of law, and the freedom of expression, and the human rights. So from an outside journalist, it's shameful for the, for us as well, that those who are patronizing our democratic values, institutions, but these incidences are happening in the highest office of the country. So this, this is incidents, this thing is happening, but I want to try to relay that I, well, from my personal experience, I report accordingly what happened in London. If I report from Bangladesh, one of the fellow journalists from Bangladesh is here, especially uh, Najbul, by he will agree with me, that then the Rob is here, I think. Yeah, if I report, you know, I, I'm covering with Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in, in ex ex example, for example, I'm covering in, in New York. But if I try to, you know, report anything, at least I will be in a jail. Mm -hmm. I cannot be, you know, accompany President uh, Prime Minister Hasina in her aircraft or the other aircraft to go to Bangladesh. Because our journalism, so I, I still, uh, the, 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 all these things are happening, but I have to say, this is the beauty of America, that we can say whatever we feel. Though there is obstruction, obstruction <laughs> going on, the freedom of press is control, we're trying to, you know, but not that much control. The society is accepting that. And the establishment is accepting that. I mean, our country, where I am from, the, the whatever the chief executive say, this is the law. Chief executive means <coughs> prime minister of the country. So there is nothing in between. You know, the simple thing is you have to be, you, you are free to talk. But you have to talk on my behalf. This is the freedom of mind. Nothing is in between. You have to be my man. Otherwise, you will be a threat like any. So, uh, so this thing is, you know, in happening in our country. And the very draconian law, I have to say, in digital act, which introduced by the unelected parliament, that to controlling the media and the press. Now, media trans transparency depends on police and law enforcement agency. They will decide. What is the report, what the basis of the report, if it is true or not, if the thing, and against the prime minister, the, there is a clause, you know, I, I'm still I'm waiting for the, I wish I'll get my slide, so still I'm waiting for that, but there perhaps, is a, you perhaps, cannot, perhaps he's facing a uh, repression of media. <laughs> so <laughs> so you, can, you cannot say anything uh, against if you say anything like, like they say embarrassed to the embarrassment of the government, I cannot embarrass any of my writing. Otherwise, I'll be I'll be prosecuted. There is, I think, the uh, even the lifelong sentence is there in the law: fourteen years, ten years, and the I think fifty thousand Bangladeshi currency in terms of dollar you can exchange. So you know, so this is the law. But before the law. What happened in Bangladesh? We are talking about the Draconian law, the digital act. But is whenever the this government is in power without a, you know, in a so-called selection in the name of election, they are trying to control in the media, and media is you know the, for their survival, they are trying to adjust with the government. Some people, there are some journalists, they are very bright. I'll mention in my slide if I go. So they are trying, and those who are bright, their address will be the. Well, they, they, in the prison, you know, so many, many of journalists, I can mention 82 years journalist, uh, Shafiq Kehman, he was in jail. And last episode, last and the very serious episode was the Shahidul Alam. You already mentioned that. What he said, he just appeared in Al Jazeera. He said about the what incident is going on, why people are demanding, particularly students, they are demanding for the, for the road safety. And he just, he appeared in the Al Jazeera, he said, and the, he told that what he believes, what's going on, and how they are, uh, how they, he, you know, 
they are uh, uh, going for the protest. So, and that's why they, they picked up and 24 hours, he was, uh, more than 48 hours, he was disappeared. Nobody claimed that he is picked up by the law enforcement agency. But then they declared, you know, he said in an interview that they, they, he is beaten up and they are, you know, physically tortured. And his cloth was, you know, and then they cleaned the cloths, with the, uh, they removed the blood, and then the, he wear again this cloth. And they said, I cannot justice in this country. So this uh, Bangladesh is, uh, I'm comparing to the uh, uh, developed world, you know, still there is, I, as I mentioned, and the, and the Bangladesh developing world, but why we are telling this in this country, but very distinguished panelists are there, you know, I can say the Ali Iftihar is a good patron of free journalism, working for the Committee to Protect Journalists, and a very good friend and trusted friend of Bangladesh, who served enemy and the friend, means Pakistan and Bangladesh as ambassador. So he has... Okay. Okay. okay, so um, uh, I'm, it's uh, bad luck for me, uh, what I have uh, tried to project in you know, a very brief way, so I'm not getting any uh, support, technical support and technical difficulties I have got. So even then, you know, so, uh, uh, we, those who we are participating here, we know everything, what's going on in Bangladesh and what's going on in America. But only one thing, we have to raise our voice. If we say, okay, what's going on? Okay, I'm not going to Bangladesh. Okay, I have some property and I, I just sold out and I bought a beautiful house and my children are going there. So, because we are from that country and we are living in America, you are living in America and you have got tremendous support from your country people, from your parents, from your roots. So we cannot forget about it. Forget about the uh, obligation. You know, so we have to raise our voice. We have to, some, someone has to raise the voice. And you know, this, uh, very recently, the uh, uh, you know, Bangladesh is, uh, the next election will be held. I, I hope the, uh, one of the speakers will address this issue, how the, uh, the government of the uh, United States of America and civil society, they are observing the situation. You know, the election commission declared a schedule, another schedule for the election. But there is a no level playing field, you know. Everything is under control by the ruling authorities. You don't have any speech, you do not have a freedom of association. we are seeing so much uh, uh, disassociation or disbelief uh, from the general public uh, why we uh, tend to get uh, sort of uh, pressed into thinking that there is fake news and uh, what is a plethora of sources of you know, information that we have in the, especially in the uh, digital media, uh, who to believe or not. So uh, there are a lot of very interesting